The last Common Ancestry video introduced us to the history of evolutionary thought and expressed the reality that we can, in fact, test the theory of common ancestry. In parts 2 and 3 of this series, we will look at the common ancestors themselves. We'll look at some of their characteristics and the environment in which they lived, so let's jump right in. There are very many common ancestors throughout history, and not all of them are outside the human species. Remember, the most recent common ancestor between you and your first cousin is your shared grandmother. Interestingly, all humans are about 50th cousins or closer. Now, if you trace the patrilineal lineage of all humans, that is an unbroken exchange of the Y chromosome from one generation to the next, then you will eventually come to the most recent common male ancestor of all living humans, known generally as Y chromosome Adam. Following the matrilineal lineage, which is the unbroken chain of mothers passing on their mitochondria, we eventually come to the most recent female common ancestor of all living humans, known as mitochondrial Eve. But, just because these two are named Adam and Eve, that doesn't mean they ever met each other, especially since most of the dates given for the two have them separated by tens of thousands of years. Also, these two weren't the only humans in existence. Eve wasn't the only female, she was a member of a tribe with probably dozens of females. The same was true of Adam and males. Eve also wasn't a specific person. Eve is a title given to the current most recent female common ancestor for all living humans, meaning that Eve can change as well as her time and placement. Currently though, both Adam and Eve lived in the African savanna at least 100,000 years ago. Now let's jump from 100,000 years ago to 6 million years ago, which brings us to our common ancestor with chimps. The website Evogeneo tentatively calculates that our common ancestor with chimps was our 295,000th great-grandparent. I covered the evolution from our common ancestor with chimps in my video Hominin Evolution, and we saw that our common ancestor was an ape possibly like Sahelanthropus, Ororin, or Artipithecus. Like Adam and Eve, this common ancestor would have lived in Africa, probably in a tropical jungle, but unlike them, would have been a facultative biped. It was probably an omnivore and had a skull more like that of a chimp than a human. Go back further. Based on genetics, we share a common ancestor with gorillas that lived about 8 million years ago and orangutans 14 million years ago. 18 million years ago lived our common ancestor with gibbons. 25 million years ago was our common ancestor with old world monkeys. 40 million years ago was our common ancestor with new world monkeys a deep split still being explored by paleontologists. 60 million years ago was our common ancestor with tarsiers, and 65 million years ago was our common ancestor with strepsirines. In each case, the genetics had to be calibrated against the fossils. Genetics says that our oldest primate ancestors should be in the late Cretaceous, but the fossils show that our earliest ancestors were later, in the late Paleocene. It's possible that we just haven't found the earlier primate fossils, but explanations have also been generated that push primate origins into the Paleocene, such as the molecular rate slowdown hypothesis. This posits that even though molecular evolution is generally constant, it slowed down for early primates. Now, let's go all the way back to the most recent common ancestor of all placental mammals, which lived about 90 million years ago or the late Cretaceous period. This ancestor was probably a shrew-like arboreal insectivore, and much of its anatomy, including even its dentition, has been worked out by researchers, such as the 2013 paper, The Placental Mammal Ancestor, and the Post-Cretaceous Paleogene Radiation of Placentals. Linking the eutherians to our most recent common ancestor with marsupials includes fossils from Eomaya to Durlstotherium to Jeremiah. Linking placental and marsupial mammals to monotremes is an impressive list of fossils from Kilantherium to Paramus to Nanolestes to Vincelestes to Amphitherium to Dryolestes to the Triconodonts to the Multituberculates to Frutifossor. All along this path, we meet, one after another, small insectivorous mammals. The same is true as we move backwards to our most recent common ancestor with monotremes, which lived about 180 million years ago in the early Jurassic. 
Beyond the true mammals, we encounter Haldanodon and Hadracodium, and we should notice that our small ancestors are getting progressively less mammalian. As we slip past Oligokyphus and Probanignathus, we see that our ancestors possess some distinctively reptile-like characteristics. And surely enough, we run into the mammal-like reptiles shortly thereafter. A parade of cynodonts, gorgonoptions, and sphenacodonts takes us back to the earliest synapsids, and you can view these on a more detailed level in my video, Mammal-Like Reptiles. We collide with our most recent common ancestor with birds and reptiles at 320 million years ago. Along with the extinct anapsids, all amniotes are now collected into one mass, and amniotes are all tetrapods that develop embryonically in an amniotic sac, whether in an egg or the mother's gut. Our ancestor is, at this point, not a mammal. Our ancestor superficially looks more like a modern lizard and lives in the forests of the Carboniferous. Likely, this was not a large amniote, but a small one that possibly feasted on, you guessed it, insects. From there, the ancestors become increasingly amphibian-like, from the Diadectomorphs to the Samoriomorphs to the Gephyrostegids, that is, you run into a large group of reptile-like amphibians, or amphibian-like reptiles. Either way, the gradual transition is very clear. All remaining tetrapods joined the pack at 340 million years ago. As pointed out in New Kinds, the earliest true tetrapods were totally aquatic, and since that video picks up here, I'm going to end this one. The next Common Ancestry video will pick up where New Kinds leaves off. We'll have left the world of countless transitional fossils and entered the world of evo-devo and microbiology. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.